Introduction Communication is the act of transmission of information. Every living creature in the world experiences the need to impart or receive information almost continuously with others in the surrounding world. Modern communication has its roots in the 19th and 20th century in the works of scientists like J.C. Bose, F.B. Moss, G. Marconi and Alexander Graham Bell. The pace of development seems to have increased dramatically after the first half of the 20th century. Elements of a communication system Every communication system has three essential elements, transmitter, medium or channel and receiver. The block diagram shown in figure depicts the general form of a communication system. In a communication system, the transmitter is located at one place, the receiver is located at some other place and the channel is the physical medium that connects them. Depending upon the type of communication system, a channel may be in the form of wires or cables connecting the transmitter and the receiver or it may be wireless. The purpose of the transmitter is to convert the message signal produced by the source of information into a form suitable for transmission through the channel. The receiver has the task of operating on the received signal. It reconstructs a recognizable form of the original message signal for delivering it to the user for information. There are two basic modes of communication, point-to-point -point and broadcast. Terminologies of communication The different terminologies for communication are shown above. Some more terminologies are shown above. Bandwidth of signals Bandwidth is the difference between the upper and lower cutoff frequencies. For example, a filter, a communication channel or a signal spectrum and is typically measured in hertz. In case of a baseband channel or signal, the bandwidth is equal to its upper cutoff frequency. Bandwidth in hertz is a central concept in many fields, including electronics, information theory, radio communication, signal processing and spectroscopy. A graph of a bandpass filter's gain magnitude illustrating the concept of minus 3 dB or half power bandwidth at a gain of 0 0.707 is shown above. Bandwidth of transmission medium Similar to message signals, different types of transmission media offer different bandwidths. The commonly used transmission media are wire, free space and fiber optic cable. Coaxial cable is a widely used wire medium which offers a bandwidth of approximately 750 MHz. Such cables are normally operated below 18 GHz. Communication through free space using radio waves take place over a very long range of frequencies, from a few hundred kHz to a few GHz. Sky waves The ionosphere is a region of the upper atmosphere where neutral air is ionized by solar photons and cosmic rays. When radio waves reach the ionosphere at a shallow angle, they are partly reflected by the surface. The ionosphere can also be similar to a prism refracting light. Different frequencies are bent by different amounts. Sky waves is the propagation of electromagnetic waves bent or refracted back to the Earth's surface by the ionosphere. Rough plot of Earth's atmosphere transmittance to various wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation including radio waves are shown above. Space wave Another mode of radio wave propagation is by space waves. A space wave travels in a straight line from transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. Space waves are used for line of sight communication as well as satellite communication. Because of line of sight nature of propagation, direct waves get blocked at some point by the curvature of the earth as illustrated in the figure. If the signal is to be received beyond the horizon, then the receiving antenna must be high enough to intercept the line of sight waves. Television broadcast, microwave links and satellite communications are some examples of communication systems that use space wave mode of propagation. The figure summarizes the various modes of wave propagation discussed so far. Mixing up of signals from different transmitters Suppose many people are talking at the same time or many transmitters are transmitting baseband information signals simultaneously, all these signals will get mixed up and there is no simple way to distinguish between them. This points out towards a possible solution by using communication at high frequencies and allotting a band of frequencies to each message signal from its transmission. We take the help of high frequency signal, known as the carrier wave, and a process known as modulation which attaches information to it. The carrier wave may be continuous, that is sinusoidal, or in the form of pulses as shown in the figure. A sinusoidal carrier wave can be represented as follows. 
The results in three types of modulation. One, amplitude modulation, AM. Two, frequency modulation, FM. And three, phase modulation, PM, as shown in the figure. Amplitude modulation. In amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier is varied in accordance with the information signal. Here we explain amplitude modulation process using a sinusoidal signal as the modulating signals. Let C of T equals A to the base C sin omega to the base C T represent carrier wave and M of T equals A to the base M sin omega to the base M T represent the message in the modulating signals where omega to the base M equals 2 pi f to the base m is the angular frequency of the message signal. The modulating signal c to the base m t can be written as shown. The modulated signal now consists of a carrier wave of frequency omega c plus two sinusoidal waves each with a frequency slightly different known as sidebands. The frequency spectrum of the amplitude modulated signal is as shown in the figure. Production of amplitude modulated wave. Amplitude modulation can be produced by a variety of methods. A conceptually simple method is shown in the block diagram of the figure. Detection of Amplitude Modulated Wave The transmitted message gets attenuated in propagating through the channel. The receiving antenna is therefore to be followed by an amplifier and a detector. In addition to facilitate further processing, the carrier frequency is usually changed to a lower frequency by what is called an intermediate frequency, that is IF stage, preceding the detection. The detected signal may not be strong enough to be made use of and hence is required to be amplified. A block diagram of a typical receiver is shown in the figure. Detection is the process of recovering the modulating signal from the modulated carrier wave. We just saw that the modulated carrier wave contains the frequencies omega and omega c plus or minus omega m. In order to obtain the original message signal that is m of t of angular frequency omega m, a simple method is shown in the form of block diagram in the figure. The modulated signal of the form given in A is passed through a rectifier to produce the output shown in B. This envelope of signal B is the message signal. In order to retrieve M of T, the signal is passed through an envelope detector. 